Hi again, it's a Draft House Diary now for Wednesday, April 19th, 2023, when I went to the Alamo Draft House in Westminster to see The Pope's Exorcist, uh, directed by Julius Avery, starring Russell Crowe. And I've talked before about the fact that I like horror movies that involve the supernatural, that involve devils and demons and have kind of churchy trappings. This was right up my alley in that regard. This was based loosely on the writings of Father Gabriel Amorth, who is billed in this as the Pope's exorcist. In fact, he was an exorcist for the Diocese of Rome, of which the Pope is the bishop. But this movie presents him as the the special forces secret agent type exorcist who's sent out by the Pope on the most important missions. And by the end of the movie, they, they absolutely dive more deeply into the James Bond version of an exorcist. But most of this movie, in spite of all that hype, is fairly well controlled, fairly well established, and ultimately it's a mystery the way most good horror movies turn out to be. The story involves an American family who is living in a building that had been an active abbey once upon a time, and it was apparently the land was owned by their family. And shortly after they arrive, the teenage son in this family is possessed by a demon. So uh, Father Amorth has to find out what demon this is and what they want and figure out how to approach this demon to exorcise it. And it turns into a pretty good story. It's really carried by its cast, a very good ensemble cast, and Russell Crowe takes the lead by portraying this character as somebody who's extremely confident in his ability, approaches this very serious subject, kind of survives working in this world by having a sense of humor. And I was afraid that that sense of humor contrasted with the subject matter of this would start to clash a bit, but it works very well in the way that this character is portrayed. So the fact that we have such a well-established character, such a well-portrayed character re- leading this kind of seems to guide the rest of the, uh, the ensemble into very good performances, and they all fit together very well. Now, there are some things I, I have a problem with in the plot of this. Ultimately, part of this mystery seems to reveal the fact that anything the church has done wrong for the last several centuries is because a certain key person was possessed. And that includes everything from the Inquisition to covering up abuse of children. And I have a little bit of a problem with that, the way they presented this. First of all, you're dealing with things that are very serious, and some of which are still affecting people who are alive today. And if you're going to address those subjects, fine, address them. Don't just use them as a hand-wavy plot point in a mystery horror movie. Now, throughout all of this, there's something else about this movie that occurred to me that really grabbed me, and that is all of the supernatural trappings aside, all of the horror movie and ecclesiastical trappings aside, this is a cop movie. This is a very specific kind of cop movie. Now, most horror movies, most good horror movies are a mystery of some kind, but this was specifically a kind of cop movie in that we have the the veteran detective who has his own way of working, and he clashes with the administration at his precinct. We have a scene in which Father Amorth is being questioned by a panel of cardinals, and it is practically... The, the angry captain scene where he's being told you're a, you're a menace, you don't work by the book, you're, you're an embarrassment of the department, if you step out of line one more time, I'm going to have your badge. It's, it's that kind of scene. And yet, he's got a case to solve, so he does. And we see him follow this mystery and work it the way he is going to work it, and he's teamed up with a young sidekick, a young partner who's green, but who needs to prove himself and and gets a chance to do that by the end. It absolutely follows that cop story structure in the context of this satanic horror movie. So I enjoyed that part. And also that plays well with the kind of humor, the kind of personality that Russell Crowe brought to the role.
Overall, the movie was good. It was enjoyable, good performances. I could see them making a sequel to this, and they certainly left that open at the end, but it really was a good standalone movie, and I think that's how it was developed. Other aspects of my trip to the Alamo. The pre-show was what I would have expected for this movie, which is a lot of clips from old movies about demons and devils. Some of them were serious. Some of them were dance routines. Most of them were a little bit comedic. Also, lots of trailers for movies involving devils and exorcisms and the like. A lot of the same clips that I saw in the pre-shows for Constantine, when I saw that in Brooklyn, and the pre-show for Pray for the Devil, but I don't think it was the exact same pre-show. I just think it was assembled from a lot of the same kinds of clips. The food on this visit, I had the pickle fries. I had never had those before, and they were very good. When I ordered them, the, the server asked if I wanted extra ranch, and I said, no, I don't think so, but I wish I had gotten it because it comes with a little cup of ranch. The bite of those pickle fries is served very well by toning it down with the creaminess of that ranch. So I'm probably going to get those pickle fries again. When I do, I'll probably take them up on that uh, extra ranch. All in all, a good visit to the Alamo, and I do think that the Westminster Alamo is still my favorite location in, in the area. If you liked this video, please consider clicking like down below. If you want more Draft House Diaries, please consider clicking subscribe. And if you want some more information about another recent movie involving exorcisms, check out my video about Pray for the Devil. And if you want another take on the idea of a James Bond kind of character in the world of devils and demons, check out my review of Constantine. But I do hope you'll be back for more of these Draft House Diaries. In the meantime, enjoy your movies, and when you do, stay till the end of the credits.